please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. From the bite point where my finger is, is going to the edge, creating aggregated balls of rubber. So the setting with the mass damper, the shock isn't working. All right, let's take a look at the tire wear that we've got that we're starting with. So, courtesy of Dunlop yesterday, Racer's Edge with Dale gave us a rear tire so that we can test. So we can see the initial wear on the tire. Nice and smooth, probably did about 30 laps on it yesterday, scrubbing in good with some other testing specifically on geometry. So we've got what we can see for wear now and let's see what we come back with after the first session. With the device in place on the bike, let's see what we got out of the box because I haven't touched it for settings. So we'll go half, one, half, two, two and a quarter of half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five total turns. So two and a quarter, we're not quite halfway. So we'll put it back to where it was shipped in the box and run it. We'll take a look at tire wear and then we'll switch it to what's the recommended setting and then show tire wear after that. First thing, obviously on the first session, get the suspension hot. We've got our previous tire wear, we know what it looks like. So we want to put in a nice warm up session of everything smooth, easy and straightforward because it's really cold today. <laughs> we don't want to do anything stupid, but by the same token, we've got to have enough pace to keep the tires hot. And they're set at 23 hot rear and 34 hot front. So that's not a problem. So everything is as usual based on temperature today with the other riders that are using these tires. So we're all set, seems to be a universal truth. So I'm not worried about that. Now, as far as settings goes, all the settings from yesterday are the same, haven't changed anything. The tire wear you saw was from yesterday from the scrubbing session. And as such, that's the even piece of the puzzle. So, in doing that, it keeps it as a constant because with the test, you need as little variables as possible. Now, in terms of theory, basically, this device is supposed to essentially, for the layman at least, mellow out the way the swing arm moves at its simplest. I know all the scientists and physicists at this moment are scratching their head going, really, did you just say that? And that's fine, because we've got to come at this from a very simplistic approach to start. If we do that, the methodology makes a lot more sense. So, as we don't have potentiometers on the bike, that creates an issue in that we have no data to look at to show the stop bike, how it behaves, and then post-install with the over-suspension device to make a clear linear difference in the graphs on the swing arm movement via the shock. So if that's the case, then obviously we've got a lot of work to do and unfortunately what we're doing is 100% subjective. And that's all part of the puzzle anyway when we're doing testing like this. So the whole premise for now is to start as simply as possible with the device. Keeping it simple makes life a lot easier on management. However, that being said, my consistency as a rider is going to be very important in getting all my reference points the same, my speeds the same, and the bike position on the track the same. And then the hard part, because it is subjective, the question becomes, one, with the suspension hot after four or five laps, is there a tangible difference between cold suspension and everything else 
that's going on at that time in regards to suspension action. And with it hot, with different settings on the mass damper, is it working in terms of one, smoothness, and two, tire wear? So if you can validate all of that, then it makes sense from a basic point of view, which is, does it improve tire wear? Does it make a difference? And if it does, great. And based on that as well, well, how much money is that saving you? Because if it's saving you a bunch of cash, irrespective of the physics of the product, you're saving a bunch of money versus the cost of the bike itself, cost of the product itself versus your tire expenditure, and of course, by the device. Because it's saving you a lot of money in the long run. So there's the end of the preface. Let's focus in now on, again, the inconsistent for the next few laps. Inconsistent. The data and the read on the rear tire will be something we can use. And then it's a case of go back out, go back out, go back out. So, 75-80% pace will allow me to be as consistent as possible with the bike. And if that's the case, then we really can say the results we're getting should be viewed with integrity. All right. Now I need time to settle in, focus on what we're doing, and make sure I'm doing the best I can as consistent as possible with bike.
the last warm-up lap. Again, that consistency part is really important. Suspension nice and hot. So what the tire looked like before. So when we come in, we'll take a close inspection of how it is. By comparison, to see if tire wear is smoother than the black wear we had on the left side of the rear looks a little more decent. So again, the scrub part is important. Make sure the wheel and the tire are hot. And other than that, then we can get to work with the device. Finish out the lap. Okay, so taking a look at the rear tire, it's about the same on the right side. We'll let those bikes go by and then we'll move it across. And as far as the left side goes, we've got a little bit of graining going on here into the tire. And based on that, we've also got quite a bit of debris on the outside of the tire. So that being said, that might be temperature and pressure. But as we're not going to change anything, let's go ahead and set the device. So we're at two and a quarter. So let's go half one. So that's three and a quarter. And then three quarters to make it four, which is one from maximum. And based on that, now let's go out and see what we get for any difference in tire wear with no suspension and no pressure changes at all. We'll do another four laps and then we'll come in and see what we've got for wear so hopefully there's a difference now recommended settings is go to maximum turn it back one so that's where we're at for recommended as a starting point what's not clear is is recommended the only setting that isn't clear at all so because of that Little, I'm not going to say confusion, but there isn't any guidance on dialing in by doing this. But that's the whole purpose of testing, right? We figure it out for ourselves by thinking, testing, and planning the next thing so that we can evaluate it properly. So back we go to start over. Suspension's hot. And I will say right out of the gate, this current setting is definitely smoother by feel of the bum. Again, not scientific, I know, get over it. But most riders are perfectly capable of knowing by seat of the pants whether the setting they have is definitely better or worse. And because of that, I think there's a fair number of riders will go, I get that, because you can feel the difference by seat of the pants, simply because our hands do versus our bums feeling. The hard part is actually teaching your hands to feel. 
that's really the difficult piece of the puzzle, so. Certainly on the straights, that setting is definitely smoother, 100%. So we'll get into it and we'll see, based on getting tires back part after the second lap, From a fuel perspective, it is absolutely different and better. Wait a second. because we made the inside pass and we'll make the exit the same there it is the so first corner has a few ripple bumps in it the rear feels a little more settled than the front. Now more bumps coming in with the pavement changes. Definitely smoother in the back. Offline, my bad. And the bowl with it under a little more duress. There's some sharp bumps about halfway. Those definitely feel softer in the back. Okay, a lot of ripple bumps in the front. Not too much difference with how the back of the bike feels through those ripples. But that's a steady state corner. Slower speed. A lot of ripples in this corner. And the back and the front feel the same. So it seems like speed introduces more smoothness when there's more, obviously more duress on the swing arm. More consistent. That's better. Dry, under dry, three quarter throttle, definitely smoother. Yep, definitely. are the same. So certainly speed sensitive. Ouch, that hurt. Pavement crack. One edge was raced over the other. Ow. Get on with it. <laughs> After this, and we're in. Whoops. That's another criteria for evaluation that makes a lot of sense. 
throttle application and speed gets smoother, which in terms of their literature helping with high side might be the case because you've got much more consistent feel and if it's smoother then sustained grip should be more consistent versus bumpy and partial loss of traction creating the high side opportunity we'll finish up the lap go in and we'll go take a look at where we're at. Now after the ride back into the hot pit looking at the right side of the tire not a whole lot of heat there let's move to the left now you can see where it's biting into the tire and you can see the shiny area which shows where all that debris from the bite point where my finger is is going to the edge creating aggregated balls of rubber so the setting with the mass damper shock isn't working so unfortunately at that point we need to try a different setting now in terms of trying a different setting then obviously we've got to go ahead and reset so let's take it all the way out and in doing that now we need to make a decision and go okay where are we going so we'll go one turn in and we'll go ahead now, suit up again, get the camera ready, get back on the bike, and away we go for the next ride.